check us out. We have a free tent, a free food tent there. Everyone's welcome to come along and we have a full stage play there. And we're going to do lots of chanting and dancing and being happy. That's what life is about, being happy. So chant, Harry Krishna will be happy. Thank you. Krishna 
Krishna, 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 Hare.
कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्णा
Okay. Just do everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome everyone, ladies and gentlemen, to our play. Exquisitely precious words, the pillars carved in jelly. A purse is made of ivory, all beautifully inlaid. With semi-precious stones and pearl that glittered in the light, reflected off the marble floor, a truly royal sight. She saw it through the doorway as she passed by on the street. Standing in the corner of the shop that sold antiques, she went inside and asked the man. <laughs> the Queen of Sheba owned it once. The man replied with face. A very rare fine antique. People who go taste. A little polish. Here and there. We'll bring it up a treat. But don't forget the bird. We also thought. She took it home that very day and placed it in the hall. Besides the walnut writing desk that stood against the wall, and sparkled as the evening sun shone through the open door, for she had washed it down and polished until her arms were sore. Sang the bird. He cried. But a lady only saw the cage and not a bird inside. That night when she lay down to sleep, she dreamt of royal cages, the kind enjoyed by kings and queens and princes through the ages. She dreamt of shiny mandarins, of rajas and of sheep, but no one had a cage to match her newly found her teeth. When at last the sun arose, she woke up from her sleep and stood there in the hallway gazing at her. And she thought she wasn't washed or dressed. She ran to take a peek and stood there in the hallway gazing at her new possession, but didn't hear the plaintive call. So great was her obsession. Caught the bird! He, he cried. But the only, the lady only saw the cage and not the bird inside. She thought a party would be nice in honor of the cage. So going through her address book, she went from page to page, inviting all the people whom she wanted to impress to come for tea on Sunday. She hardly could contain herself while sending out the cards. Well, thinking curtains would be nice, so could chase Suno. several yards. <laughs> of silk brocade to make the cage more beautiful than ever, and stayed up swelling all night long. So green was through and ever. On Thursday night, she started making all the preparation, from current buns to angle cakes, in great anticipation. Of all the guests who said they'd come, to see the new auntie, the vicar, Mr. Baldradesh, and his social people. 
She cleaned the cage on Friday till it sparkled like a pin, but never saw the starving bird who begged for food within. And then, forgotten far too long, he tumbled from his perch, yet managed with his dying breath a final feeble chirp. Gasped the bird. He cried, and then, without another word, he breathed his last, last, and died. On Saturday, she cleaned the cage and polished it with pride. Quite unaware, quite unaware, the bird was dead and lying there inside. But by the time the doorbell rang and the smell was growing strong, she thought. Oh, in the cage. There is something very wrong. And twos and threes, the guests arrived and gathered in the hall. Around the polished birdcage as it stood against the wall. But all agreed it smelled so bad it really was absurd. The only one with half a brain would fail to feed the bird. Shocked at her short-sightedness, they asked her why she never thought to give the bird some food, inquiring. So great was her embarrassment, she tried to run and hide, but slipped upon the Persian rock and fell upon her side. And to the antique birdcage, which then toppled to the floor and broke into a thousand pieces, some say even more. Exquisitely the cage was wrought of pillars carved in jade, and purchase made of ivory, all beautifully in vain. With semi-precious stones and pearl that glittered in the light, until it smashed upon the floor, no more a royal sight. For those who haven't understood, we will leave you with a clue. The pampered cage is flesh and bone, the women really you. Who think this body all in all, who kills the soul inside, and waste the chance of human life, misled by foolish pride. Thank you very much.
any material world. That you're going to get anyway, that's there. I'm not saying you don't have that, but it's the purpose by what you use, how you use things. So this is what the Bible of Peter explains. This is what Krishna is saying. And his first installment of transcendental knowledge, he gives in the second chapter, is what the play... Did they give you the punchline? Did they give it, could anyone decipher that play, by the way? Okay. Well, the idea behind the, the, the model of the tale is that you're the, you're the person in the body. Okay? That's just like a bird in the cage. You have a bird in that cage. You spend all day looking after that cage. You polish that cage, you go build edge that place, you have a beautiful cage. You have the best cage around, you know, wow, look at my cage. And then you've got the bird. Oh, feed me, feed me. So, this is what we like both individually and collectively as a society. We spend so much time on the cage, on the body. I mean, was it cosmetic industry, like a billion pound industry, trying to stop us growing old, trying to stop death, science saying we're going to fix death. It's the difference between um, Vedic culture and, and modern science is we embrace death, we can't stop death. We try to fix it, that's what we like, um, our Western kind of thinking, we're going to fix it. We find the formula, we flick the switch and we stop old age and we'll stop death. You're not going to do it. Sorry to be the bearer of the bad news, but she's not going to do it. But it's where you go. What your next destination? Because according to that, the body will change, but you don't. You will follow. Everyone had the body of a young child one time. Then everyone then you're in a ten-year-old body. Then you're in a twenty-year-old body. Then you're in a forty-year-old body. Then you're in a sixty-year-old body. And then you leave the body. But it's you who experience being in the body of a five-year-old. It's you who experience being in middle age. It's you who experience old age. So who are you? That's the question you have to be asking. Who are you? What are you doing here? What is your purpose? This is what the bag of it is. This is what the principle of religion, all religion. What is Christ say? What profits a man that gains the world and loses his soul? We, people, we've got to work up, what they say, wake up and smell the coffee. We have to wake up. And this is what chanting mantras, this is what chanting Hare Krishna is doing. It's awakening us to this inner self, to your inner self, who's within this body. It's not, the soul is not Christian, it's not Hindu, it's not Buddhist, it's not male, it's not female, it's not black, it's not white. It's none of these designations which is, highlights all the problems you'll experience in this material world. Everything, if you look at it, comes from there. It's related to the body and related to the mind. All the problems really can be. People identify with a particular religion and then condemn other. People identify with a particular race. And then they condemn others because they're not of the same ethnicity or the same color of the skin. This is not what this is not human life. This is not what Bhagavad Gita teaches. You're the person within that body. And when you can connect to yourself, then you can connect to others. And that's called yoga. Yoga means you connect, you join. When I used to work underground, we used to yoke carriages together. You connect together with yoke. You know, yoke two oxen together. It means you connect. So when you, that's what the purpose of yoga is to connect to you. And then when you connect to you, then you can connect to others. Then relationships take go on a deeper, more meaningful level. And until we get to that, that's the platform of peace. That's the platform of love. Everybody wants to love and be loved, we can't function without it. Everybody, love makes the world go.
कृति कृते कृष्णा दुभ्यम नम कृष्णा दुभ्यम नम कृष्णा दुभ्यम नम